G'day everyone, the anti-theocrat with you for another one. Um, this is another one from last year. We're going back to October last year. But I think this is one that's worth covering. Just look, I'm not entirely not on side with this stuff. But at the same time, I think you'll understand why I'm taking issue with it. Uh, so let's have a look, shall we? Suicide Prevention Australia. Innovation Research Grants announced by Minister Hunt. Six innovation research grants have been announced by Minister Hunt. This initiative is part of a suicide, the Suicide Prevention Research Fund, which Suicide Prevention Australia manages on behalf of the federal government. Congratulations to the recipients for their dedication to research in suicide prevention. Read more about the successful recipients below. Professor Miffany Maple, Dr. Sally Fitzpatrick, Associate Professor Nicola Reevely, Associate Professor, Professor Ashley Lynn, Dr. Laura Biggs, and Miss Josie Povey. Does anyone else notice something missing from this? We're told constantly that representation is important, and I don't actually believe it myself, but um, we're told that Hollywood representation and representation in every way, shape and form is important, but does anyone see a problem here? Right, I know there are people out there going, this is not an Aboriginal. <laughs> Yeah, there could be an Aboriginal woman stuck in there and you'd still have the problem that the biggest group of people committing suicide, full stop, are not represented. There is not one dick swinging in this lot. Not one man being represented. So let's have a look at their projects, shall we? Professor Miffany Maple. Professor Miffany Maple of the University of New England was awarded $91,690 for their innovation research grant project titled A Mobile Phone Messaging Intervention to Support People Bereaved by Suicide. <sighs> so this is not addressing people committing suicide, even though... Uh, it possibly could be preventative in nature, but it doesn't address the initial suicide problem. So let's move on, shall we? The research will develop and evaluate an evidence-informed brief contact intervention comprising a series of text messages for people bereaved by suicide. The overall goal, overall goal of this research is to develop a low-cost, easy to implement accessible support for people who experience the suicide of a loved one to reduce the significant harms associated with exposure to suicide including future suicide ideation behavior and death filling a significant gap in the current suicide prevention activities now I could pretty much set you up a web page that had these feel good messages on it for free. I would love someone to give me $91,690 to essentially provide the service of text messaging people annoying feel good messages. Because that's what that reads as. You will get those uh, lovely little buddhist um be good to one another and everyone will be good to you uh, yeah sorts of messages love yourself because only by loving yourself can you love others go fuck yourself i don't need that shit when i've gone through this sort of uh intense situation you know i'd be willing to come uh, if if someone in my life committed suicide and i was actually grieving horribly over that i think if you sent me text messages of lovely sweetness i would be inclined to hunt you down and help you commit your own suicide 
because this would be fucking annoying. This this would be the sort of thing that would drive me fucking nuts. I I block people's feeds in my Facebook if all they are is one of those people who sends uh, feel good wishy washy fucking meme shit from other people. Right? If you've got nothing to say to me yourself, if you've got nothing you want to tell me, you're posting wishy washy fucking memes all over Facebook is not the sort of shit I want to have any part of. And you will find, or you would find if you looked at my Facebook feed, that you won't appear in it. It should be in my friends list, but nothing from your feed would appear in my list, in my feed. Because I don't buy that shit. I don't know who would buy this shit. I, I know women go for all this wishy-washy crap, but really, text messages to people? A phone ringing in the middle of the bloody recordings that I do is annoying enough. But in the middle of my day, I'm getting on with this shit, and, and you're going to just text mess me, message me, feel good messages. Fuck you! The research aims to test whether low-intensity psychoeducational intervention reduces the risk of adverse outcomes following suicide exposure, identify risk and protective factors associated with the outcomes following exposure to suicide death. In a statement, Professor Maple explains, we know that suicide bereavement is a particularly difficult life event to experience. We are really excited to be recipients of this SPRF-funded innovation grant as it allows us to test an intervention that is easily accessible for people who have been bereaved by suicide to help support them following the death of someone close. We believe this can avert some of the challenges people experience in the wake of suicide. Now, I understand that in the wake of suicide, maybe some people themselves can become suicidal. But I tell you, I would probably dr be driven harder towards being suicidal if you sent me these text messages. Seriously, all I would need is a beer at the pub maybe a few maybe maybe a few over a few days to just mope for a bit your fucking feel good messages would drive me insane anyway uh we're not actually addressing suicide here we're addressing the people who survive people who commit suicide worthy cause but Dr. Sally Fitzpatrick. Dr. Sally Fitzpatrick of the University of Newcastle was awarded a hundred thousand woo top dollar for their innovation research grant project titled A Randomized Control Pilot Study of an Online Intervention for Families and Friends Affected by Suicide Attempt. So this one is the online version of the feel good messages for friends and family of people who have attempted suicide as opposed to the text messaging for families and friends of people who have actually committed suicide. <sighs> you couldn't do both of those things for a hundred grand? I could set those two things up for 20. Look, I might even mention a program project I would love to set up that I've started trying to work out how to get public funding for a project. A hundred grand would be such a fucking ripper starting point, and it would actually provide people real care. Anyway, <sighs> this is just the online cutie messages instead of text messaging. Building on previous work in suicide prevention and with carers, this research will develop a new online intervention for families and friends of those who have attempted suicide. It will also integrate a social networking site, Breathing Space, with a new program. The overall goal of the current study is to pilot procedures and obtain data on the accessibility 
of integrating the new online program and social networking site together. The pilot will determine the feasibility of a definitive randomized control trial, RCT, for the effectiveness of the two new programs. The research aims to ascertain if families and friends will engage with online support program and social network application tailored to their needs and experience. Examine the benefit to families and friends of an online support program and social network application tailored to their needs and experiences. In a statement, Dr. Dry, Dry Fitzpatrick, I'm guessing this is a typo because the name's Sally, not Dry, um, Fitzpatrick explains, I am passionate about translating research into effective and accessible programs for Australian families impacted by mental health, mental ill health and suicide. The Suicide Prevention Intervention uh, Innovation Grant provides a value op, valuable op, opportunity geez, tongue, to develop tailored support to families and friends who care for others after a suicide attempt. This group is underrepresented in our services system, yet provide most of the practical and emotional support to those impacted by suicide attempt. This grant allows us to support those who support others. I get it. I, I get it. I just don't know if an online support program is I don't know how effective online support programs are I guess I'm in a lot of dads groups where dads talk about how their exes have stopped them seeing their kids or the family courts have stopped them seeing their kids and by talking about these things the guys seem to be able to get a little bit of their anger out um, but I just find the idea very limiting. There's no one-on-one -on -one contact. There's no... Uh, I don't know. Look, I, I think, right, we're looking at uh, $600,000 almost issued to these people. I think if you put $600,000 into um, making mental health experts available to these people, you might just do all of this in one hit right they can sit down uh, for three days over whichever time period they want at the government's expense with a psychologist or a psychiatrist and have a chat now that face-to-face -face intervention or assistance would it has to be better doesn't it maybe maybe you could offer them the support in whichever way they want it so they could get a community nurse to come down they could get a mental health professional to see them okay three days support offered to to help these people out um, maybe for a very small amount you could even set up a backup online support service I'm not at all going with the text messaging thing. That can go and get fucked. Uh, <laughs> that would really just drive me insane. But there must be a way to do this. That $600,000 would make more efficient uh, use of... We'd make more use, more efficient use of $600,000 by funding something like that than these research grants which are basically probing around things that a little bit of common sense could probably sort out for people or, or at least offer actual assistance with. Okay, Associate Professor Nicola Reevely. Associate Professor Nicola Reevely of the University of Melbourne was awarded 98222 for their res innovation research grant project titled Evaluation of Australia's First Residential Peer Support Suicide Prevention and Recovery Centre. Now, this one I'm okay with. This is exactly the sort of thing that I think $600,000 could help with and make use of. I do have some concern that women who 
cut themselves for attention seeking purposes and maybe men who do it i don't i haven't known any men who do it i've known men who've killed themselves but i've known women who cut themselves knowing full well how to kill themselves but doing it so as not to kill themselves but only to draw blood and gain attention one of these women that i've known actually sat down and told me that that's what it was about for her it was about attention seeking she didn't understand why she had that drive or whatever else but the concern for me is that attention seeking is not uh, fixed by giving people more attention right i discussed this girl that I knew's cutting with her in terms of why are you so fucking stupid? <laughs> I wasn't giving her any fucking love over the fact she cut herself. Now, I actually liked the girl. I, I thought she was a nice enough person. There, there was no reason for her to be in this situation except some mental deficiency on her part that was was probably accessible by someone who had more time for it than I had. But you don't make these people stop wanting to draw attention to themselves by giving them more attention uh, in any case there are people who do survive genuine suicide attempts and this would be something that could assist independent community living australia i see it la and roses in the ocean i don't know either of these organizations particularly well but i will have obtained funding to pilot a residential peer support suicide prevention and recovery center the spark uh, in close proximity to the prince of wales hospital sydney this service will open in november 2019 and offers 24 7 operation capacity for up to seven nights stay for a minimum of four and a maximum of eight guests what happens if they've only got one available one guest at any one time they don't open the place for them uh, a dedicated staff comprising peer care companions and mental health community support workers with clinical oversight befriending support and psychological recovery plans and problem solving group-based therapeutic therapeutic creative and trauma healing focused activities short-term intensive care residential stay minimum two nights up to seven days for those with more acute needs transition support and referrals for people returning home the research aims to evaluate the impact of sparks on a range of psychological suicide related and service out use outcomes in residents and their families through qualitative and quantitative measures in a statement associate professor reevely explains i am delighted to have been awarded this funding it's all i don't know why i read these statements they're more about just crawling up the government's ass for the money uh, it enables us to evaluate the impact of new south wales first non-clinical suicide prevention and recovery center building the evidence base for programs like this is critical to better supporting people to risk uh, at risk of suicide and i look forward to working with the team at independent community living australia on the project like i say i don't have too much trouble with it i do worry that it will provide attention to attention seekers but how do you single them out from the people who genuinely need and can use the care? Uh, I guess that will be their business, not mine. What are we up to? Associate Professor Ashley Lynn. Associate Professor, Professor Ashley Lynn of the University of Western Australia was awarded $98,335 for their innovation research grant project titled can homeless young people be part of the solution in suicide prevention assessing the value of homeless young people using safe talk the number of homeless young people continues to increase in western australia 
Yep, there's another typo there. They left out an A, maybe. And across the country, homeless young people are at risk of suicidal behaviour due to increased risk of poor mental health, substance misuse and overrepresentation of other marginalised groups. Moreover, this cohort is often disengaged from the educational environment and lacks the opportunity for mental health, psychoeducation and support. This research will deliver safe talk and work with existing Telethon Kids Institute partners who provide crisis transitional accommodation services for homeless young people. Safe Talk is a universal intervention that prepares anyone over the age of 15, regardless of prior experience or training, to become a suicide alert helper to young people accessing these services. If Safe Talk is found to achieve the aims of the study, Safe Talk will then be able to be recommended for suicide prevention with homeless youth. <sighs> I have lived in share accommodation with people who were essentially, some of them were uh, on and off homeless, some of them were essentially homeless in that they were living in very crowded, cheap-ass share accommodation with me. <laughs> um, and I've lived in my car. I, I've been at that point in my life. Um all I can say is I could have answered this very quickly. I oh look, I also know that there are other people running these sorts of projects all over the place. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul's does these sorts of things with government money as well. It's just another one. It's just another one of these things about talking with young people. In this case, it's trying to get young people to talk with young people. The one thing I can tell you for certain is young people don't want young people talking this shit with them. They stop talking with them. Tell them to fuck off. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Uh, I'm betting that uh, Ashley has never been homeless. Has never been one of those hard-ass kids that ends up out of the house, uh, out of home and working out life for themselves. I I just bet she's never been there and done that. Uh, because it's not what most of us are looking for. Uh, yeah, you can find the ones who are willing to be churchified or whatever else. Of course, there's all sorts of people out there. But on the whole, I don't think I knew anyone in my circle who would have been happy to discuss suicide with their peers. Not in these terms. And it's not like we didn't know people who were cutting themselves or suiciding. Just didn't fucking want to discuss it. Uh, okay, the research aims to equip homeless young people with the skills to identify suicidal behaviour, destigmatise suicide. I'm wondering if she, they know how that reads, because to me that reads as... Well, essentially the way I've treated suicide, you know, uh, it's your life, do as you will with it. It's not for me to say you can't kill yourself, really. If, if that's the only way you can think to solve your problems, and I can't talk you out of it, then go ahead. Um, No skin off my nose, and I'm not going to judge you by it. And that's how destigmatizing sounds to me. <laughs> Uh, increase suicidal literacy. God. I, I just see you now lecturing homeless young people on how to talk to other people about suicide and them just walking away thinking, I'm going to go and sit and have a cone and fucking forget this shit. And the ones who actually take it on board aren't going to be invited to have those cones. <laughs> Facilitate conversations with individuals who are suicidal, connecting them with life-saving interventions and resources. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to set up free labour. Uh, you're going to train homeless young people to talk to other homeless young people. You're not going to offer them solutions for being homeless. Uh, this is more about them because they, they really need to maintain that homeless status to talk to other homeless people, don't they? I guess they could get share accommodation like we used to do, but yeah. Uh, in, a, in a statement praising the government, Associate Professor Lynn explains young people who experience homelessness are at, the, are at a heightened risk for suicide compared to their peers with stable accommodation. A duh. One way in which the risk of suicide could be reduced is to provide homeless young people with the skills and knowledge to seek support when they are feeling suicidal and to assist others who are suicidal. This funding from Suicide Prevention Australia will allow our team to study whether providing a suicide prevention training program called Safe Talk to young people who are experiencing homelessness can help increase their confidence in talking about suicide, seeking help and ultimately reduce suicide attempts in this vulnerable population. We will conduct this study in partnership with Mission Australia, Perth Inner City Youth Service and Lifeline WA. If the training is successful, this program could be rolled out across accommodation services in WA. Uh, in Australia, sorry. Um, no. <laughs> no. Look, I lived with people in this demographic. I, I was actually the only person holding down a job throughout the entire time. Uh, but I lived with people in this demographic. I, I was an apprentice. I earned fuck all money. So this is why I was living with these people in, in this demographic. Uh, it was the only way I could afford to have a roof over my head. And I was thousands of miles away from my family. So I had no other opportunity than to take up the cheapest possible accommodation options. Which, at yes, one point included living in my car. Um... There are other people already doing these sorts of things. I would bet Mission Australia do this sort of thing on a regular basis and they would be getting short-term government funding to run these projects because I've been to these sorts of projects with St. Vincent de Paul with the people that I was living in because they'd get an invitation to go to one of these things and given my girlfriend was one of that crowd, um, I'd go along with so I know that there are always short-term funded projects from people like Mission Australia and St. Vincent de Paul to talk to young people about, you know, suicide prevention and shit like that, to get them, to try and get them involved in social activities for a week. That, that's how they mainly get their funding for a week or two week long projects. Um, no, no, these projects won't work. The people you should be training are not the youth, but the people at the shelters. And don't train them to talk to these people about suicide. Just talk, just talk to young people. Assess them first. If you find someone you think might be in a suicidal situation, open gently with them about your concern but don't push and this looks like pushing you will turn them away from you if you push i know there are all sorts you might get one or two but really i i don't see this ninety-eight thousand dollars doing much more than every other short-term project that i've seen which is fuck all. My household used to get stoned, go off to do these art and craft projects where someone with fuck all qualification in talking to youth would sit down and do some arty farty shit with them and talk to them about being a homeless or or poor student or whatever in the fuck else it was that they were the project was particularly aimed at that week. 
and um, after it, we disappear off and go and get a few more cones in us and say, yeah, well, it was a day out of the house. <laughs> That's all it ever was. Uh, sometimes three days out of the house, but, you know, we did have an outing that someone else was paying for on short term. Like I say, you wouldn't see them again for another three months. There wouldn't be another project or it would be offered to other kids or something. Dr. Laura Biggs. What do you got for us, Dr. Laura? Dr. Laura Biggs of the Murdoch Ch Children's Research Institute and in collaboration with James Cook University was awarded $99,980 for their innovation research grant project titled The Hidden Epidemic Suicide in the Paranetal Period. Effective paranetal suicide prevention relies on an understanding of the phenomena I love that word, of suicidality at this time. I actually want to, to name a band phenomenon just because I love that word. <laughs> no research has been identified that reports on women's experiences of suicidality in the perinatal period. This knowledge is crucial in order to implement effective suicide prevention measures the study will explore the nature of suicide, suicidal thoughts and the social and contextual factors contextual factors that contribute to suicidal ideation and behaviour in the perinatal period. This, the research will be undertaken in collaboration with Australia's leading consumer perinatal Mental Health Service Panda, Paranetal Anxiety and Depression Australia, and James Cook University. Okay, so what is Panda doing with their money that they're not already doing this? I want to know, because this seems to be their express area of expertise. Anxiety and depression perinatally. Right? This is what Panda does. Now I understand Dr. Briggs has got her wage for the next year paid to work with these people. But what are the fuck are Panda doing? <laughs> the research aims to understand a women's experiences of suicidality in the perinatal period produce a grounded theory that explains the development of ideation barriers to facilitators to help help seeking see i don't think there needs to be a barrier to help seeking in this area there is so much care available for mothers uh, potential mothers uh, for women having kids and having had kids there there is there are programs there are ways and things and what have you available i mean we've got panda for starters right um but you all you need to do is ensure that the country's um doctors and midwives are all suggesting to women who look like they're having trouble seeking help and pointing them in the direction of someone who can give that help. Um, I, I don't know that there needs to be a barrier or that even a barrier exists, but I guess you've got to find out, don't you? Access to adequate care. I, I guess assessing how effective the care that is available is, is a worthy thing. But again, why isn't Panda doing this as part of their day-to-day -day work? All of this sounds like exactly the sort of thing I would expect Panda to actually be doing as part of their day-to-day -day work. Asking questions, learning, to better provide their services. Uh, protective factors against suicidal behaviour. Uh, look... I've seen two women through pregnancy and all the rest of that. And 
I know hormones go awry and I know all sorts of shit can happen with women during this period. But really, there is already care out there. You've already got an organisation that specialises in this. They could be asking these questions. All this funding has done is paid this doctor to spend time working on this project. Fair enough. I think the thing that bothers me is what what is this actually addressing? How many women actually commit suicide in the paranetal? Is it six a year, maybe? I'm on the fifth grant, and not one of them addresses male suicide victims. Uh, not one of them is addressing research into why men are committing suicide. Do, did anyone else see one of these five grants assessing whether the family court had an and uh, being deprived of your children had an impact on the suicidality of men? I don't see any of this. Uh, largely, I see money being spent just employing people. Employing people on short-term projects which will end nowhere mainly. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in a statement, Dr. Brig Dr. Biggs explains, The receipt of this grant allows the research team to conduct the first study to explore and explain women's experiences of suicidality in the perinatal period. Although suicide is the leading cause of of maternal death in Australia, it is. Well, yeah, okay, I'm actually going to give that because I wonder how many women uh, are actually dying uh, in the maternal period. Um, because we've gotten pretty good at birthing children, uh, human beings. So, anyway... Very little is known about women's experience at this time. An understanding of factors that contribute to the phenomenon, a phenomenon is needed to develop appropriate approaches to assessing and managing suicidal risk in this vulnerable, vulnerable group. This study will achieve this understanding through the development of a theory that explains suicidal, suicidality during pregnancy in the year following birth. Look. Isn't that what Panda is meant to be doing? Why are they not asking the right questions? Why are they not following up with the que answers to the questions they ask and putting it forward as research? Because you can suck $100,000 out of the government and turn it into something for... A relatively small part of the population. Yeah, all right. Look, I, I get it. At, at least they're addressing suicide, unlike Miffany and uh, Sally, who are addressing care to families after the event. This is meant to be suicide prevention, remember? Okay. Ms. Josie Povey. Miss Josie Povey of Menzies School of Health Research was awarded $100,000, top dollar, for their innovation research grant titled Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Mental Health Initiative for the For Youth App. <laughs> app! App! And Feasibility Study. Ay, ay, ay. The uh, feasibility study will determine the viability of a larger scale clinical trial testing the effectiveness of the app in approving well-being in youth aged 12 to 18 years attending multiple regional headspace centers oh for fuck's sake what is, is this is this going to be a game is, is it going to be a cheery happy game because <laughs> i don't know if you know anything about blackfellas but the idea that 
Aboriginal kids, in fact, kids in general, but, but really, really, the idea that you think Aboriginal kids are going to be assessing an app to uh, try and improve their mental health and, and their, diminish their risk of suicide, I don't think you know anything about the people you're addressing. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I can tell you now, there are, you would be more, you would probably do more for them by setting them up with a bloody Xbox and a series of games, really. The new de newly developed app is a self-driven smartphone app which is co-designed with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth in the Northern Territory, incorporating a universal strengths-based mental health early intervention utilizing mindfulness based activities motivational interviewing and psychoeducational techni techniques this fun interactive and informative app aims to promote aboriginal and torres strait islander cultural and family values empowering young people to make change and improve well-being so is this the kids out in the the um, communities where the elders complain that the kids beat them up all the time? Is it? Just asking. I mean, I'm wondering if these kids are really app users, happy, cheerful app users. Again, set them up with a what, what's uh, what's on the cards these days? GTA's old. What what's my son been playing? I don't know. I don't, I'm not up to date with the newest games, but set them up with something like that and, and I network the games together so they can all play together and you will provide them community. Oh, I know video gaming is not ideal community, but any fucking community for these remote kids particularly is better than no community. Now, if they can sit and abuse each other in a computer room with a networked group of computers playing games together, you will create them a social space. Really? Uh, an app! A fucking app! <laughs> You're going to have to pin them down in, cl in, in uh, classrooms or something, aren't you? And, and get them to play with the app. Because when they leave, they're not going to do that. I'm not even sure you understand kids, because Aboriginal kids have a slightly different mindset than other kids, but it's not that different. So I don't even know if you understand kids full stop. But, oh God. <sighs> the app as a locally developed cultural appropriate inter early interventional strategy which incorporates a holistic holistic view of health specifically aligns with the national aboriginal and torres strait islander suicide prevention strategy for fuck's sake <sighs> community community i don't know how often i have to say this but what we lack in outback australia is community community activities community training community support and community ongoing projects I, I, look i can see you've included the kids in building this thing it seems anyway and good on you but when it's built and your money's run out do you walk away do you hope that someone else continues with this project? Because short-term project funding does not help Outback Australia build community. We need a little bit more commitment. <sighs> but an app, well done. The research aims to inform the clinical trial procedures and instruments in an early intervention clinical service delivered setting, Headspace, Darwin. I'm wondering how many kids use Headspace. Um, 
uh, how do you get the Blackfella kids in there? Because, look, I've mentioned it before that I've done projects with kids through other groups. And Headspace is one of those things that offers short-term craft projects and shit for kids. But they seem to deal with very small segments of the community. They, they're not, they don't seem to be getting massive amounts of kids through the door. And they seem to be getting the kids through the door who are either looking for a freebie um, or, or the ones who are already, you know, accepting of whatever it is that's being sold. I went to school with Aboriginal kids and half-caste kids because I'll differentiate two different mindsets there, very, very different mindsets uh, when I was going to school with these people in Darwin. And I can't see any of them being interested in these projects or these programs beyond uh, knowing that there's a freebie involved somewhere along the way. Um, I mean, every other Thursday you knew which kids weren't going to be at school. I had a homeroom class filled with mainly half-caste Aboriginal kids and every other Thursday they'd all vanish. We wouldn't see them. Coonchek came in. That's what they called it, not me, so don't fucking get up me for being a racist. Their Coonchek came in. $45 a fortnight for going to school. So as long as they were there for nine days of the fortnight, they get their coon check, they take the day off, go and blow their $45 each. They'd be standing around the bank in the morning. <laughs> Seriously, I saw them more than once, and I knew these people, I went to school with them, I associated with them. They'd be standing around the teller machine at the bank, waiting for 9 o'clock when the money came in. <sighs> anyway, in a statement, I, I'm... Yeah, in a statement, Miss Peavy Povey explains the funding allowed me allows me to continue to work in a specialist area I am passionate about, with the support of a highly skilled and experienced team. This project maintains strong connections with the local community, has a focus on capacity building, and ultimately works towards improving early mental health intervention op op options. For Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth. Now, you know, the easiest money on the planet is blackfella money. You don't even need to be a professor or associate professor or a doctor to get this money, it seems. Um, what can I say? But did anyone else notice that not one of these grants reaching a hundred thousand dollars addressed issues with men not a one the large single largest group who face suicide and not a single grant dedicated to them i'm going to um come back i'm going to go and dig up my project and see if um See if you're interested. Well, just just test it. I'm testing the waters with people. I really want to try and crowdfund a um, a source of money for a project. Uh, hopefully, an ongoing project that actually deals with people. Anyway, I'm going to stop the recording at this point, and I'll be back. <laughs> what I put together in a um. A spiel that I have posted around social media a bit to try and get some interest. And I've got to say, I'm depressed at how little interest there's been. Uh, people like the idea, but nobody seems to want to be the one to kick it off. Or the one to say to me, how do we kick it off? 
So I'm going to put this out there because I think $100,000 would go a long way to seeing this project started. Please read this. This isn't my usual ranting essay. So I'm seeking ideas, help, money, someone, an organisation to auspice it or run it with, or run it with. Pretty much anything I can encourage to get this an idea off the ground. Running a shelter is a full-time and expensive or volunteer-rich prospect, and we all know supporting men is not a profitable undertaking. I have for some time taken people into my own home when they need help, but it's normally tourists having problems who will move on and not become a burden to my family. I have helped locals, mostly older people with little jobs, but I'm less inclined to offer my home. So... I had the idea to fund a room, any room, in a hotel or even a cabin in a caravan park to help men in need. But again, I'm not rich and it falls outside my ability. This year I saw every cent of savings stripped from us just because I had a son enter the Navy and my mother-in-law die. And having savings of, and having savings of note was something new for us. My point is, I think this is a good idea, but outside my ability. To be able or not to have a fixed location means up. Uh, to be able to not have a fixed location means there is no need for secret locations like women's shelters do, or requires no staff, just a managed fund. If it was rolled out nationwide, it would not rely on my local ability to afford it, only my local ability to act as an agent selling the product to local services and to the male population. If I could offer one day a week, it would... Uh, if I could offer one day to a week, it would be a start and a motel would allow for a single or with kids and with no more than a booking. It may even be possible to get a booking discount as a support from the chain, where chains exist. They don't here, but we're also more able to deal with the owner. Yes, uh, the idea is booking a hotel room, uh, any hotel room, any caravan park. And because you're booking the room as required, it could be a single man or a man with kids. And it doesn't just need to be domestic violence situations. It could be a, a man in a suicidal position who could just do with a day away. Uh, a day away from all the stresses. Uh, go to a hotel, have someone provide a meal and accommodation for a night to help relieve the stress. This is a really broad reaching. It doesn't even need to be for men. And I wouldn't sell it as a thing for men. I would actually sell it as something that steps beyond the women's shelter thing. Anyway, I will keep reading now I've worked out what this has done to me. Um, this has played on my mind for some time, and I was prompted to post this on the topic when I came across a post I've added. There was a, a post added about um, male shelters and so forth, or the ability for men to find care. If every one of us interested in the welfare of men, men and their children offered up $20 to get this started, we could set up a, re a real offering. I say $20 because that's within my budget. I could maybe go to 50 to kick something like this off, whereas giving 20 or 50 to a single organisation in a single location a million miles from where I live seems a waste of my funds when help is needed locally. I know Mario's fundraising, this is for a, the guy who was in trouble, sorry. I'll try and skip past this, uh, because they were fundraising for an individual. This has to be a nationwide effort. It has to raise funds on a nationwide basis, as there is no money of note in supporting men, but together I think we can work, I can, we can work this. If once a year we all went and fundraised a small amount of money, to top up the kitty, and if we can do it without paying a large wage bill, we, this could work and work cheaper than a women's shelter than women's shelters. If anyone is interested in discussing this, uh, offering or offering any options, yell out. Now I'm more than happy 
to see other people run with this idea. More than happy to see it happen. Just let me know where I donate my money. But if I have to be the person to get this up and running, I will be working on it. Um, let me know if you would like to be involved. And it doesn't even have to be nationwide. Uh, um, there's no reason we couldn't offer a service like this in the US and Canada and the UK, um, across Europe. Uh, there is a need for this sort of service, something that gives men a escape route. I don't think I'm the person to run this. It will be bigger than me if it gets running and I'm too remote. I live in Outback Australia and I'm just one person working as best I can. I guess with help we could set the office up here and I would love to have something significant on a national level based in our small outback town. Community building, remember? Give people jobs, give them something to do. But I'm too intelligent to believe I can set it up and run it alone. Right now my head is running with strategies as how uh, to do things like retain secrecy. If a guy wants to uh, a place and has a car, She'd find it, uh, find it here no problem. Essentially, there's half a dozen hotels in town. You drive up the main street and you would see his car parked at the front of it. So what you want is a, um, a safe place to park his car and then use a taxi service or pick him up or whatever it takes to move him from his car to the accommodation you're using. Um, it, it wouldn't be a very big task for people to do um, and, and it gives you that secrecy that the women's shelters fight so hard to maintain uh, yeah so basically i just say that if uh, i was running it here i'd book it in a in my name or a partner's name rather than in his name until you know we had some sort of organization we could book it under um but if we could get away with it um the best option would be to have that organization that can book a hotel room put someone in it um, run all the necessary insurances or anything that might be required for such a thing but really if anyone thinks that this is a better idea than spending a hundred thousand dollars to build an app for aboriginal kids um please please let me know let me know if you start it let me know if you want me to keep working on this and if that you can help me with it just I watch all this shit, hundreds of thousands, six hundred thousand dollars go out to what essentially are useless things that don't address uh, people actually in need. And you cannot get funding for men in need at all. I mean, not one of those grants covered men. Uh, I'm going to leave this video at that point. If you think that we can set up a fund that will be accessible to men in need of emergency accommodation, and not just men, I, I really do not want to just make this about men. I, I think this can extend beyond the women's shelter movement uh, to help women. Uh, I know they have plenty of services. But as a men's rights advocate or activist, if this sets me up as an activist, then I'd really like to see this set up. I know there is so much concern for men out there amongst us. Can't we all spare 20 to 50 bucks to get this going? I am so passionate about this thing, I cannot tell you. I will draw no money, no wage from this. Nothing. No interest in it. I would pay someone else to run this because I know I'm not the person to do it. I think the only thing I would need is possibly expenses. And 
I'd be prepared to take those out of my own pocket if that's what it took to kick this off. Anyway, if you think that this is worth more than $100,000 grant to set up a, a um, study with an organisation that should already be wondering why women are committing suicide during their natal period... <sighs> Oh, we should set up phone apps that tell you how sweet and lovely you are. Oh, fucking hell. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm going to leave this video at this. See you all in the next one. May your gods remain fictional and all the rest of that crap. Ciao all.